Hello and welcome back to Start Learning Complex Numbers. And of course, as always, first I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Now, in this video I want to talk about some important notations and calculation rules for the complex numbers. Indeed, this will be the last video in the Start Learning Mathematics series. This is because all the topics here continue in my real analysis course and my complex analysis course. I really think after watching this whole series here, you have the correct foundation to understand all the other courses. Okay, then let's finish the topic of the complex numbers here. And please recall, we denoted them by this C. Moreover, any complex number could be written as x1 plus i x2. And in short, we will call this complex number z. Also, we've learned in the last video that such a complex number z can be visualized in this complex plane. There we find x1 on the x-axis and x2 on the y-axis. So x1 and x2 are just ordinary real numbers. And for this reason, they get special names. First, x1 is called the real part of the complex number z. And usually it's denoted with Re of z. And on the other hand, x2 is called the imaginary part of z. Indeed, the names make sense because, for example, the real part of z lies on the x-axis, which represents our ordinary real number line. And on the other hand, the imaginary part lies in the direction of i and is usually denoted by im of z. Okay, now in the picture, you should also see that we have visualized the complex number with an arrow. And of course, such an arrow has a well-defined length. And this distance we usually call the absolute value of the complex number z. However, you also sometimes see the term modulus of the complex number z. Okay, now what you should see is that we can easily calculate this length when we use the Pythagorean theorem. Here you should immediately see the right angle in the triangle. This means that the length is given by the square root of real part of z squared plus imaginary part of z squared. This is what we call the absolute value and therefore it's denoted with bars around z. Here please note and remember this is always a real number because it's a length. Moreover, this means it's a positive number or zero. So this is the absolute value, which gives us the distance from the origin to the complex number. Now I can tell you, for calculating this absolute value, a reflection we can do in this plane is very helpful for us. Indeed, this reflection we will do now is called the complex conjugate of the complex number z. So what we do is just flipping the arrow. So we reflect it on the green line. This means that we don't change the real part, but only the imaginary part. And indeed, we just change the sign of the imaginary part. Hence, if z is x1 plus i x2, the new number here is x1 minus i x2. Or more precisely, you would write x1 plus i times minus x2. However, you already know that we can shorten that and that this makes sense. Now, the notation one uses for the complex conjugate is given by z bar. Sometimes you also see a star, but in mathematics usually we use the bar. Okay, so this is the complex conjugate and now you might ask, why do we need it? In fact, the advantages of the complex conjugate I can immediately show you when we just multiply z with z bar. Hence, we get this product here and then we can apply the distributive law and get four terms out. So first we have x1 squared, then plus x1 times minus i times x2, plus then i times x2 times x1, plus finally minus i squared times x2 squared. Or in short, minus i squared x2 squared. Okay, and then you should see the two terms in the middle are exactly the same but with different sign. Hence, 
they simply cancel out. So what remains is simply x1 squared plus, and there you should see, i squared is minus 1, so we have minus 1 times minus 1, which is plus. Hence we also have x2 squared. And now you should see, this is exactly what we have in the square root for the absolute value. Or in other words, this has to be the absolute value of z squared. Now I can tell you, this relation here will be very important when you deal with a lot of complex numbers. And you might already see this a little bit in our next part when we talk about polar coordinates. Indeed, these here can be very helpful when you need to multiply complex numbers. We can use the picture from before because we already have one half for the polar coordinates. Please recall, we already know what the length of the complex number is. In other words, if you know the length, we know the circle where the complex number has to lie on. And now to fix the point exactly, we just need an angle. So let's call the angle phi and it should lie between 0 and 2 pi. Now, from above we know when we have the real and the imaginary part of z, we can calculate the length. And with this information, we are also able to calculate the angle. This also works in this right angle triangle. Indeed, what we can use is the arc tangent, the inverse function of the tangent. So more concretely, we take the side on the y-axis, so x2, and divide it by the side of the x-axis, so x1. And then the inverse of the tangent, arc 10, gives us the angle phi. However, please note here, this formula here for phi is only correct if we work in this region of the coordinate system. If we work in another region, we have to manipulate this formula a little bit. However, it's completely correct if x1 and x2 are greater than zero. Indeed, it also works when x2 is exactly 0. I don't want to spend time for the other cases here, because it's not so important for understanding the whole topic here, but I put all the cases in the description in the PDF version of this video. Now, one important thing I should tell you is that this angle phi is often called the argument of the complex number z. Now, with these two pieces of information, we can write down the complex number in a different form. So you already know, you can write down the complex number as x1 plus ix2 as before. But now we can also say it's the length times the cosine of the angle phi, because this gives us the part on the x-axis, so x1, plus i times sine of our angle phi. Simply because together with the length, this gives us the part on the y-axis, so i x2. Okay, so this is the complex numbers using polar coordinates. Because here you just need to know the length and the angle to get the whole complex number out. Now, to close this video, let's look at an example. So here, let's simply start with a complex number z. So maybe let's take it as 3 plus 3i. And then the first step would be, what is z bar, the complex conjugate? And now you already know, this is the same thing, just with minus i instead of plus i. However, now we are able to multiply z with z bar. This is not hard to see, this gives us 9 plus 9, so 18. Therefore, the absolute value of z is the square root of 18 which can be rewritten as 3 times the square root of 2. Okay, then the next step would be calculating the argument phi. Using the formula from above, this would mean we divide 3 by 3 and then we take the arc tangent of it. However, if you draw a sketch, you might already see we have exactly 45 degree as the angle. Or in other words, we get pi over 4. Okay, with this we have everything and we can write z in polar coordinates. So we have 3 times square root of 2 times cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. And indeed, 
that's all we had to do here. Now, later in my complex analysis series, you will see that we can rewrite everything in these parentheses, so cosine plus i sine, as an exponential function. In fact, this is written as e to the power i times pi over 4. At first, this might look strange, but later you will see that this can be very helpful for a lot of calculations, because it's a very short notation. Now, with this video you have seen that if you want to work with complex numbers, you already have to know a lot. For example, knowledge of arctangent, cosine and sine might be very helpful for all these calculations here. Also, we have square roots involved, pi involved and also now an exponential function. For this reason, the Start Learning Mathematics series ends here, because now you need to learn real analysis. And then you can go deep into the complex analysis series. Therefore, thanks for listening and I hope that I see you in my other videos. Have a nice day and bye!